Hi, I'm Katie, and today I'm going to be talking to you about fat-soluble vitamins. That's vitamins A, D, E, and K. The following information in this video can be found at the following sources. The first vitamin we're going to talk about is vitamin A. Vitamin A is also known as retinol. Retinol is used to help maintain night vision, to help in protein synthesis, and also is important for cell differentiation. In order for retinol to have vitamin activity, it requires four things. The four things in order to have retinol vitamin activity is a one beta ionone ring intact, no oxygen in the isoprenoid chain, the isoprenoid chain also must have its terminal end either being carboxyl, aldehyde, or alcohol function. And trans are also going to give the greatest activity for retinol. Now that we've seen what gives vitamin A its vitamin activity, we're going to see how those things can pertain to its structure. Another form that you can find vitamin A in is also beta carotenes. Beta carotenes are going to have a similar structure to retinol, minus it's going to be two of the retinol structures combined, where they're both going to have the beta ionone rings at the end. At least six grams of beta carotene are used to yield one gram of retinol. Raw retinol can be found in animals, carotenoids can be found in plants, but also some animals. The sources of vitamin A are liver, milk, egg yolk, leafy vegetables, citrus, carrots, and tomatoes. When used in vivo, vitamin A is part of the antioxidant defense system. The part that's used is going to be retinol. Vitamin A is also going to have a specialized function for vision. When used in vitro, which is going to be the functional properties of food, once again, retinol is going to be used as an antioxidant, but carotenoids are going to be used as a colorant. The next fat-soluble vitamin we're going to talk about is vitamin D which is also referred to as calciferol. Vitamin D actually is increasing the adsorption of calcium in the small intestine and is also promoting mineralization and growth for the bones. The way we get vitamin D from the sun is by converting D2 and D3. D2 is ergo calciferol, which is found in yeast, fungi, and plants. And D3 is colo calciferol, which is going to be found in animal tissues. When D2 and D3 are then affected by UV light, that's what converts these molecules. The structure shown here is going to be D2 ergo calciferol, while just one slight change to this area right here can make it D3. When we remove the double bond that's located in the circle, that's what makes it D3, the Coley calciferol. It's important to get enough vitamin D because if not, hypovitaminosis can occur, which can be dangerous. The next fat-soluble vitamin we're going to do is vitamin E, which is also known as tocopherol. Vitamin E is also important as an antioxidant. It also helps with red blood cells and is important for all biological membranes. A tocopherol is going to be three saturated isoprenoid chains. The most common of them is going to be the alpha tocopherol. Alpha-tocopherol acetate is often added to food for vitamin fortification, but does not act as an antioxidant. The way it functions as an antioxidant is because when it's inside the body, the body is able to cleave those bonds. There's little danger to over-consuming the amount of vitamin E. The source of vitamin E is going to be found in fats and oils, in vivo, in the antioxidant defense system and in vitro will act as an antioxidant. The last fat-soluble vitamin we're going to talk about is vitamin K. Vitamin K is also known as menadione and is important for being a necessary part in blood coagulation and it's also is going to be involved in post-translational modification of proteins and also is going to be used as a pharmaceutical anticoagulant. There's two major groups of vitamin K and that's going to be the philoquinone and also the menaquinone. Philoquinone is going to be K1 and it's going to have three isoprenoid chains involved and K2 is going to be the menaquinone which is going to have two to seven isoprenoid chains. K2 is going to be isolated from animal and bacterial sources 
And minadione is going to be the base structure of both K1 and K2, so it's often referred to as K3. Sources are going to come from green leafy vegetables like broccoli and cabbage and kale and those kind of vegetables. It can also come from the bacterial ingestion inside of your gut. In vivo, vitamin K is used in specialized functions for carboxylation reactions. Now that we've gone over each of the fat-soluble vitamins, I'm just going to review with you what kind of conditions that vitamin A, D, E, and K are going to be stable and unstable in. In heat, only vitamin K is going to be stable. In acid, the only one to be stable is vitamin D. In alkaline conditions, the only one to be stable is going to be vitamin A. In O2 conditions, the only one to be stable is vitamin K. In UV light, the only stable vitamin is going to be vitamin E. Anytime that metal is involved, all four fat-soluble vitamins will not be stable. To rehash, vitamin A is only stable during alkaline conditions. Vitamin D is only stable during acid conditions. Vitamin E is only stable during light or UV. And vitamin K will be stable during heat and O2 conditions.